What's up, whiskey lovers? Uh, welcome back for a bit of a special interview, uh, we'll call it, with one of my favorite whiskey brands with Bladnock. We're with Will. Will, thank you for joining us. That would be a fist bump now, yeah, you know, we're... socially distant, you know, we've got a a few feet between us, so yeah, uh, we'll keep that space yeah, a little yeah. bit there. So, mate, you've brought some amazing stuff that um, I haven't been able to get my hands on um, from Bladnock that I've been looking forward to. Um, mate, tell us what we're doing. Yeah, so look, you know, the last kind of uh, few months have been a little bit uh, unexpected for all of our plans for releasing new whiskies, and uh, a couple of our whiskies were exclusively made for uh, bars and whiskey bars and restaurants, and Obviously that's not been possible in the last few months, so we've uh, kind of changed our tactic a little bit and we've uh, released a couple of whiskies uh, exclusively through our new uh, e-commerce store. Yep. Uh, two whiskies we're gonna have a look at today. One is the much anticipated single cask, uh, the uh, 2020 slash 03, so that's uh, number three of the five casks we've been released this year uh, by, uh, by Nick Savage, our new master distiller. And the other one is the Boilermaker House Select Cask. So uh, we have two ranges of single cask whiskies. Single cask, which are five casks each year chosen by us. And the Select Cask, which is made in collaboration with you know, one of our absolute like, closest friends and, and you know, best, uh, best customers around the world. So the very first Select Cask is the Boilermaker Cask Edition. And uh, that's what we're gonna be uh, trying today, along with uh, a collaboration on a collaboration which is our first ever beer collaboration, which is the uh, Knockout, uh, which is uh, made with the guys at Black Hops uh, down on the Gold Coast. So for anyone that doesn't know, uh, and you've watched any of my videos, um, Blood Knock 17 is hands down my favorite. So hopefully today I find a new favorite. Um, but one of the things that I didn't know about is this was kind of a exclusive somewhere else. It wasn't really, you couldn't buy it at the bottle shops or anything like that. You actually had to go either to a club or things like that. They now have it online. So if you are okay. looking for one of the best blood knocks, not much range, left, Zach. Not much no, left. No, no, no. Quick, I'm going to buy a few more anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so they've actually now started releasing these ones. Um, the boil, uh, sorry, which one, the boil maker house. That one is something that I um, heard about a long time ago, and obviously we couldn't buy it. And then obviously with what's going on, mm. you've now opened it up. So yeah, very excited for uh, the taste testing for today. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So first one, what have we got again? Uh, I thought let's start off with the single cask. This doesn't actually uh, exist in Australia yet. Uh, the team in Scotland put one in a courier package and sent it over to us and uh, literally today is the first time it's been opened uh, uh, a few minutes ago to, uh, to you know, make sure that uh, it, it, was, uh, it was good stuff. So we've got uh, bottle number 168 sitting here uh, out of 222. So uh, this is, uh, as I said, is the, is the third of the five casks released. And this is the Australian exclusive uh, single cask. And this is at cask strength as well, isn't it? Absolutely, all at cask strength, non-chill filtered and natural color. Uh, and this cask number three is an ex-bourbon barrel. So first of all, bourbon barrel uh, filled in 2006. Yep. So it's uh, actually a 13 year old whiskey. Yep. Uh, but uh, all of the single casks, it's all about the vintage. So you can see we put here the uh, uh, date of distillation, December 2006, and the uh, date of bottling, which is March 2020. So uh, every year we're going to release another five casks. Yep. Nick's already got in his head what he wants for the future, but obviously you might tweak that depending on what's really just ready to be released. Uh, the five different casks that each had something exceptional. So when he joined us back in July, he had the tough job of going through and Tasting a sample from tough pretty much job. every cask in the tough, warehouse. Tough job, yep. Uh, and these were some of his gems. So yep. um, the last time that people would have tasted a cask strength blood knock are those who were lucky enough to get their hand on a little whiskey that you've got floating the... around we saw over there. Oh, grab that one. You can tell we planned this very well. <laughs> <laughs> the blood knock 10. So the blood knock 10 whiskey club edition. So this one is an exceptionally rare bottle now because all of the uh, stock went to the, uh, the guys at the Whiskey Club. Uh, this edition was made from a combination of uh, bourbon, ex bourbon barrels. Yeah. And so it's actually a, a batch all put together and vatted and, and made at the cask strength. So uh, this on the other hand is from one single barrel that was, okay. uh, that was drawn uh, very similar to the barrels that went into the 10 year old. Uh, this is cask number 229. There's uh, probably of all of our, uh, uh, our casks for a leading up into when Bladnock was closed for a period. Uh, 
the bourbon barrels probably our uh, we've got a greatest selection there. So this really is the best of a of a, a group of barrels that uh, that we're working on. So when you talk about a lot of these things are normally at the distillery only release. Mm -hmm. How many per year is generally? Is that something that it changes all the time? Just depends on what barrels you've got. But like, is there always a special bottle at the distillery that no one else can really get unless they're there? Look, a lot of distilleries do what, what we do and, and keep things for when you visit the uh, visit the distillery. Uh, so there's uh, Cask Zero One, which is the one that's the UK e-commerce mm. release. Uh, that was going to be one that was only available if you visit, visited Bladnock and uh, and did the uh, the visitor centre tour. However, of course, we've had to close the visitor centre, so that is the uh, edition that's uh, exclusively online for uh, UK uh, for UK consumers. So, any any top fans out there, they're, probably, <laughs> they're finding someone in the UK now to buy them a bottle and find, Look, send it over. We've been getting quite a few emails from people <laughs> going, "I want that uh, that cast zero one," and vice versa. The guys yeah. in the UK are saying we want to get our hands on uh, on cast number three, but for the uh, for this first release, number three is for Australia. Number one is for. Uh, the UK, mm. and uh, you know we've got a few other casks there that we're going to uh, be be releasing in some other markets. So there we go. Uh, this is the first one, and as I say, it's on the ship right now, on its way over to uh, to Australia, landing kind of late June, early July. Yeah. Uh, I think there are a few people hoping for some uh, some favourable sailing conditions that so lands as soon as possible. But yep, this is the, this is the first bottle that's uh, made its way to Australia, and we're getting to taste it today. I'm bloody excited. I don't think I've ever been able to get a bottle of whiskey that hasn't actually been released yet before. <laughs> so to sit down and, and try something that no one else really has is absolutely amazing. So, Excellent. and one of the coolest things that I love about the Blood Knock is the beautiful cork on it, and go, also this beautiful silver top on it as well. So no, I better let you do it. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to spill it, and if it, if, if, if it's spilled, it's all on him. So, so this is the first time we've ever uh, kind of made a change to our label. We're using some nice uh, Glencairn uh, tumblers. Yep. I know that some of the purists might prefer that we use a Glencairn <laughs> tasting glass, but uh, uh, we can try it in a different glass if you think it changes the, the flavour. So yeah, we've completely changed the look of this to make it really, really different. I mean, you can see here on the uh, on the 17-year-old, it's used as a much more uh, kind of a dark brown kind of colour in the in the neck label. So we really want to distinguish this from the rest of the range. So yeah. this is really something quite special. We'll only use this design for the single cast. So, so this is something that I'm, I've got on a couple of other bottles as well, is that you know, you've got the actual labels on the, on the front here as well, but you do have these white labels. And hmm. to me, the white label, because if you have a look around here, there's not much other. We've got some Star Wars up the top there. Again, the select stuff is hmm. white labels. It makes it look like it's a bit more crafty and a little bit more select on it because, mm. you know, as you said, everyone else is exactly the same all the way through it. So, mm. yeah, so something that's special. Smell. Yeah. So, uh, look, this one here, uh, even though, you know, we've got quite a few bourbon barrels, and you know, Nick really picked this to, to, I guess, highlight the fact that no two barrels are exactly the same. Mm. And I got up with Nick on our uh, Facebook last week and we had a good chat. And that was one of the things that he mentioned is that. You can have five bourbon barrels distilled on the same day, filled the same day, same type of wood, and each one are going to be mm. quite distinctly different. This particular one stood out, and for him, uh, all of this uh, uh, the, this vanilla that you get in a classic bourbon barrel was really accentuated with a kind of a, a fudge, kind of toffee apple kind of a flavour okay. to it. So that was his kind of uh, distinguishing features of this particular cast that said this one rather than blending it into our Bladenock 10 or uh, you know uh, one of our other whiskies. It, it stands out and it needs to be put into its own cask. What's really interesting, the smell of it isn't as, and it being a cask strength, um, compared to the 10 year old cask strength, the 10 year old is more, it, it feels, or it has that more kick to it, a mm -hmm. real alcohol kick. And this one already smells a lot smoother. Yeah, look, I think the um, uh, the um, Whiskey Club Edition was 58.9, I think. Uh, 58.7. 58.7. Uh, you know well, I don't know, a few <laughs> years ago. This is 59.6, so it's even got a couple of uh, degrees more than the uh, Whiskey Club Edition. Of course, over the years, uh, there's different rates of evaporation for different barrels, depending on where they're in the warehouse and the kind of wood. And it means that uh, uh, the Whiskey Club Edition would be made of, of barrels of a range of different uh, strengths, you know, around that 58 mark. Yep. Obviously, this is one of the hotter ones that uh, would have gone into the cast strength blend a few uh, a few years ago so mm. yeah something that is you know particularly pretty special so it's got that lovely light color you know and you compare it to something like uh, 
yeah. uh, like the like the Adela or even the 17 year old and you can really see the you know, that that lighter, that lighter color there that comes from the, the fact that uh, there was no wine influence in this barrel yes. which obviously gives some some really good color we don't put any color into any of our blade knocks it's kind of important that when you're trying a single malt that uh, you know you're getting what you're getting. getting. You're getting what you're getting, and you get to see, you know see and appreciate the the color that's imparted from the cask. So, is this one of Nick's first releases? Yeah. So, basically, the first uh, whiskey that Nick worked on uh, with the Blade Knock team was the Talia 26 year old. Okay. That's another one that's uh, um, also uh, being released uh, online. In the, uh, I think it's available for for purchase now, and I think we just got our first shipment arrived this week. So anyone who's ordering that Talia 26 year old, it's um, it's now uh, available for shipping. The uh, second one that uh, Nick worked on was the 11 year old, mm -hmm. which is uh, also here uh, as an Australian exclusive. There's got to be some benefits of being owned by an Australian as a whiskey distillery. Is Australia for the first time gets all of we these actually exclusive get releases, stuff. yeah. That, and that's always that's as I said, we were talking about before. I'm, I'm really on uh, um, really early on my whiskey journey in the sense of collecting and stuff of like that, and really enjoying them. What I found is that you'd go online and you'd find all these things. You go, oh, that one looks amazing, and then you're like, oh, it's in America. And then mm. to get it from America, it's, you know, three times the cost with everything that we do. So mm. to have stuff like this, it's pretty cool. Yeah, for this sure. Is, this is great. So oh. look, think that the, uh, the uh, single cast though, uh, for Nick, it's a really great opportunity for him to, uh, you know, pull some casks that, that in his mind have really showed the best of Blad Knock, mm. which we really love because it's a chance for us to continue to tell that Blad Knock story in a different way to a lot of people who've discovered like you. Things like Adela and 17 year old, you know, really kind of wine driven. Yeah. Uh, you know, here we've got in the, the single cask collection amongst the five, we've got bourbon cask, we've got manzanilla sherry cask, a couple of red wine, we've got a, a big bowl of sherry butt. So a whole lot of different styles of Blad Knock that, um, that we, can, uh, we can share with, the, with collectors. Who is the person you're going for? Or who is the, who is the drinker that Nikki is going into making this for? Because this, this is not a beginner's drink at all. Well, I wouldn't yeah, think. Yeah. Look, um, <laughs> It's an interesting question, and maybe we should. Uh, I'll ask Nick that next time I, uh, yeah. I catch up with him. Who he's uh, who he's aiming for? Look, I think that it's less about making whiskey for someone. It's more about saying with this particular one, you know, here's the best of one particular uh, you know, element of of Blad Knox collection yeah. of, uh, of of great aged whiskey, and therefore for someone who's wanting to discover, I guess the the, the strength and the breadth of the of the Blad Knox, uh, you know, aged whiskey catalog. Trying some of these single casks, you know, give you a real insight into you know what we've got available, mm. uh, because it's you know there's nothing done to it. It's literally taken from the cask, it's uh, and it's put into a bottle. There's there's no kind of uh, you know, intermediate steps, which uh, uh, for someone who's really appreciating you know what it is to to to, to make a whiskey they can really see behind the curtain. And the good thing is, anyway, if you do want to change it, there is other ways to make it. Obviously, don't put coke in it. That'll be the end of it. Um, Red Bull. Red, Bull's it. Uh, Red Bull, there we go. Or make it a highball. But you could add a couple of you know, drops of water and, and change the flavours mm. and everything like that as well, which is... Um, um, I did try that with the Blood Knock, the 10-year-old calf strength, mm. and I still actually preferred it being the calf strength on it. Yeah. Um, just wasn't... You know, if I wanted to go that, I'll mm. just go the 10-year-old, which you can easily get at you know, every shop. So One of the great things about calf strength is that it gives you back the power to add the water that you want. I mean, when I caught up with Nick last week, that was exactly his theory as well. And he loves to add a couple of drops to, to all of the single cask range. And in fact, when he's making whiskey, he's telling us that's exactly what he does, is that starts with the cask and then cuts it down and then it just unlocks more and more flavors. Mm. Because when he's making whiskey like, like this, like a select cask or single cask, he realizes that, you know, the the person who's consuming it is not just going to drink at cask strength and so he has to make sure that the, uh, it stands up to being drunk at, at full cask strength at something approaching the kind of the blade knock strength which is 46.7 yep. and even down 40 and below uh, so that you know people are uh, are getting the most out of that cask at the different strength so you know it's a it's a big call to say we've chosen one of all the blade knock bourbon cask whiskey that we've got to put into a, into a bottle like this um, and so we do a lot of work uh, at the distillery with, with Nick and his team to make mm. sure that it is the right one. Well, he's done pretty bloody well, I can tell you that yeah. for this one here. So, mm. and I do definitely feel very privileged having the first, <laughs> the first sip of the single cask. So thank you. So the next one we've got is the Boilermaker. Now, this one isn't cask strength. It's a no, 48. No, try to correct you. It is absolutely cask oh, is strength. It? This is cask strength. There we go. I'm sorry to, uh, to, uh, to, to the, no, I haven't, we haven't communicated right. This is absolutely a cask strength. Wow. Whiskey. Okay. Yeah. There However, we go. 
being nearly 19 years old, there's been the Angels have taken a little bit more of their share of the uh, yep. of the alcohol in this one. So there we go. Okay, so I and this is something in my whiskey journey I've got to learn is that I just assumed that anything that was under basically 50 was not cast strength. So um, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So, so I mean, look, every year the volume of the cask uh, is uh, evaporates to the Angel share. Yeah. Uh, but it can go two ways. You can actually increase the, uh, the alcoholic strength because more water evaporates from the cask than alcohol. Yep. Uh, or of course you can go down where more alcohol evaporates than water. And it's a really a, a factor of how the cask is stored and what the environment is as to whether it's, uh, it's very, very dry, in which case water evaporates quicker than alcohol, hmm. or whether it's got a bit of moisture and a bit of heat where the alcohol will come out uh, uh, more quickly. So in this case, you know, we're Bladnockers, you know, we're down the lowlands of Scotland, we use a traditional dunnage warehouse, that's so all dirt floors, there's no concrete poured floors for where our whiskies are aging. Uh, every year the alcohol volume drops, and so uh, you know, the Talia, for example, which is you know, the latest Talia 26, is cask strength as well, hmm. That's 44%, and that's a 26 okay. year old uh, whiskey. So uh, the, the alcohol strength does drop down uh, you know, quite a bit over the years, and that's what I guess makes some of these older whiskies just so rare and collectible is that uh, every year there's less and less to bottle. Yes, that's it. So, one of the things we mentioned there, you, you don't have like concrete floors and everything like that. You, Bladnock is kind of, they went through a big renovation, what, five years or six years ago or something like that? Yeah, five years ago. Okay. Um, obviously, that's when the Australian owner came into. Mm -hmm. um, they've kept it pretty traditional, haven't they? They have, yeah. yeah. Okay. The renovations focused a lot of it around the stills, uh, renovating the, um, the mill, uh, where we take the, 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 the malted grain and, and turn it into grist. Uh, and uh, you know, really just tidying up the, the warehouses where things were stored. Mm. So the, the stills themselves, uh, we replaced a, a single pair of stills with two pair of stills uh, and hugely increased the volume of whiskey that we can distill or the volume of, of spirit we can distill every year. Uh, that was really the biggest change. However, the stills themselves were created by the top uh, still makers of Scotland, Forsyths, yeah. and uh, they were made in quite a traditional way. So you go to Bladnock, it's not one guy sitting in a, in a, in a booth pushing buttons on a computer. It's turning valves, it's very much hands-on. You see pictures of our spirits safe. We've, Put a few up online recently, and you can see that it is absolutely a hands-on. It's definitely you know handcrafted in the uh, where we're making the cuts in the whiskey. So. I was going to say, I think I saw an Instagram photo only a couple of days ago, and it was a beautiful piece of machinery. That yeah, you just yeah. So I can't wait for all of this to be over, and I can go over yeah. and have a have a look. So. Yeah. And so this one, as I said, it was the um, Boilermaker House. Now these guys are in Melbourne. They are, yeah. Yep. So Boilermaker House, really good friends of ours. Uh, Greg Sanderson and his team have been supporting Bladnock really since the very start when we launched Bladnock uh, in Australia back in uh, early 2017. So when it came to our first collaboration cast, we basically went in and, and pitched the idea to them and they just jumped straight on board. So what we did is we sent five different cask ideas over to the guys in, in Boilermaker House and Greg and, and uh, at the time it was uh, Asher, the manager and the team, got to try all these casks uh, samples and uh, chose the one that they liked the most, which was uh, Moscatel Finish. Okay. Uh, Asher from their team, uh, we flew him over to Scotland and uh, he spent some time uh, with, uh, with the team in Scotland, you know, tasting the different, um, uh, uh, the different casks from the kind of with the Moscatel Finish before uh, he kind of landed on the one that cask number 102 was the, the perfect one to work for Boilermaker House. So they were really involved with the, the story of choosing the cask and, and being part of that. Uh, and since so soon after that, uh, we uh, dropped the cask and it was uh, bottled in, I think it was November, uh, December, uh, yeah, November 2019, we, uh, uh, we bottled this one, shipped it over and launched just before Christmas uh, in Boilermaker House only. So the only place you could get this is if you went to Boilermaker House and you ordered it off their menu and uh, and they had it with uh, with a beer. So there we go. So I, again, I didn't know, I didn't read the label before when we were, when we were sitting down before. I actually thought that this was like early 2019 because online, that's probably one of the most talked about Blad Knocks <laughs> that I'd seen when I started, started when I, you know, when I fell in love with Blad Knock mm. and things like that. That's the, the one that everyone was talking about. Mm. So to only have it, what are we now, five months in mm. and we're what, two months of lockdown. Yeah. Not bad. Well, I mean, look, the thing was <laughs> is that initially it was only going to be available at, at yeah. Boilermaker House. And, you know, the idea was is that, uh, you know, if you ever wanted to actually get a bottle, you would have to physically visit the, the, the bar. 
of course all of that changed in in march when they yeah. had to close the doors so we uh we talked with with greg and his team we thought a, a great way to do it would be to, to make these these bottles available to to, to fans far and wide mm. so uh together we decided we were going to put it up online and uh some of the very first bottles went to uh the people who had visited boilermaker house and now we've made it more widely available to uh to, uh, to Bladnock and Boilermaker House fans. And uh, so this uh, whiskey is again a uh, limited release. So it's um, 275 bottles for, for sale. And uh, it's only available in Australia. It's only available for the moment on our, on our shop. Very hopefully available again at Boilermaker House. Yep. I just heard from Greg today and they're slowly planning the uh, reopening there. So uh, if you haven't been there um, and they're open soon, you should definitely go and check them out. It's a fantastic bar. Yeah, it would be uh, very hard for any, not just them, but anyone in the in the hospitality industry and bars to um, do, be doing anything at the moment. And and one of the comments you made the other day, or when I think your first interview you had, mm. um, you had a pure Scott pre-made cocktail from one of the local yeah uh, different bars. Texas, yeah. Yes, that's it. So uh, we went away last weekend um, in Brisbane and I called Death and Taxes up. We actually got 12 uh, delivered to nice. us, uh, all different things. And that Pure Scott one, the Green... Green Man. Green Man? Yeah, the Pan Man. Yeah, that yeah. was absolutely amazing. So, all right. And then you've collaborated with uh, Black Hops. We sure have. So this is something which is, again, I actually haven't... This is going to be my first uh, can that I try of this. This is the... Uh, this be- it's either going to be work Black out... The Hops Knockout. It's going to be really bad <laughs> or it's going to be really good. But uh, it's been specifically made for this. So I'm pretty right, sure yeah. that it's going to be great. You're of little faith, Zach. So <laughs> it's going to be excellent. Well, I, I just don't know until we taste it. I, I have had the beer before, but I've had it at Boilermaker House. Yes. So initially they had kegs of Knockout. Yep. Uh, which, if you had a Boilermaker House... Blade Knock Edition, they would serve it with a knockout um, on tap. Uh, we called up the guys at uh, Black Cops and said, look, you guys made this amazing beer to be paired with this uh, fantastic whiskey. You know, all these people sitting at home, they're gonna miss out on that real Boilermaker experience. Mm. You know, the Boilermaker, the idea of a whiskey and a beer is just such a perfect way to enjoy a drink. So uh, they made a very, very short run. So they only have made uh, 54 packs of this uh, particular beer. And it's again, only available on our, uh, on our website to uh, try. So uh, this is the uh, is the knockout. So uh, do you want to pour the beers and uh, why don't you pour the beers and I'll pour the whiskey? Okay, cool, no problems at all. Uh, we've, so, got a, we've got a, a couple of uh, beer glasses there, so you can see the colour of it. So it's a uh, it's a it's an amber ale, and it's uh, using Marisotta um, uh, hops to uh, to get the particular flavour that these guys are looking for, uh, and uh, it's a little bit. Probably a, a little bit spicier than uh, than some of the other ones that Black Hops have made. Uh, I haven't had this for six months. This is literally the first can that's just arrived at my house today. So really looking forward to big, uh, to trying this. Big shout out to these guys because um, go and Google them. The bit of the history on it. I know of Dan. I'm not a friend of Dan. I'm a fanboy of his process of what he's done in life. Um, I actually know about one of the guys that started this from um, when I was doing real estate stuff. It was um, a a course that he had, the seven day startup. So this guy was talking about how you can build a business in seven days. Um, They didn't build this business in seven days, but they built part of the process of what they did. And these guys had a contract uh, with uh, Black Ops, not Black Hops, the computer, the the game. Um, Is it Call of Duty or Black Ops? I can't remember, but I think it was Call of Duty Black Ops, the the, the whatever yeah. release they had, and they did a beer specifically for them. Right. And I believe they're one of the first um, beer companies or distilleries to um, uh, get funding on like a GoFundMe kind of system right. as well. Okay. So they do things a little bit differently. They are local to Brisbane. Um, so yeah, so kind of good that they've kind of come on board and done yeah. this as well. So And it's a really cool collaboration to have, you know, three parts of the world of, of, of Boilermaker. Boilermaker House, the bar where you enjoy it, the whiskey maker and the beer maker all working together on a particular beer. So. And now being able to enjoy it at home instead of having to yeah, not be able for to the, enjoy Wait it for the bars to open. That's it. So this is uh, all about that Moscatel. Bladnock's only ever released one other Moscatel finished whiskey since uh, we've um, uh, we've had the distillery. It's the 29 year old Bicentennial. So okay. that's the only other way which you could have it today have a Moscatel finished uh, whiskey. So. so that's a lot smoother on the smell. It's a bit more, is it Christmassy cake she kind of? Yeah, there's a little bit of that kind of Christmas cake. It's okay. got that a wonderful kind of, that, that classic sort of fortified, you know, body to it. Ooh. 
I mean, it's uh, it's very different to Aradella, our sherry cask, which is Oloroso, and it really highlights just how the kind of fortified that was in the cask before the whiskey makes a big impact on the flavor. So. There's something in there, and I'm, I'm terrible when it's trying to pick out, you know, flavors from whiskeys and stuff like that, but there's some, it's, it's a very, it, this one's probably very, very, very smooth. It's, it's on par of some of the other ones that I quite enjoy, the 17. But there's something on the aftertaste there, which I can't pick, that is absolutely amazing. That is almost great. like a little bit of cloves. The Christmas cake comes a little bit of that. Yeah. Very, very light spice. Yeah. I mean, uh, Nick says sweet baking spices. Oh, and, right. Uh, okay. I think that, um, like you say, if you, sometimes you say a particular flavor and then immediately you hit you straight it. to that, uh, that flavor. But you're right. It's got that, that cake that's sort yeah. of, um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's overly sweet. I mean, sometimes you see a Moscatel. And remember, it's a Moscatel finish that so hasn't been its entire 19, nearly 19 years in a uh, in a musket cask. Mm. So it means that it's just enough to give it a, a, a big kind of kick of that uh, of that sweetness. So now the moment of truth to try it with the uh, with the beer. Mellows it out, doesn't it? Yeah. It just, it just complements it really well. I read a great article yesterday about boilermakers that. Um, uh, that um, Andrew uh, from, uh, he's a big active uh, guy on uh, Australian Whiskey Appreciation Society, yep. wrote about Boilermakers and I really enjoyed his sort of thoughts and it's kind of like three things you can do with a Boilermaker. You can really contrast the flavor with something that's completely different, so something that's really dry and really sweet. Um, you can uh, complement it, so there's like flavor compounds that you get in the whiskey and in the beer. Uh, or you can cut it where there's like a real sort of like front flavor, which is like a, maybe a goze and a really you know, big kind of bold sort of dark whiskey and it goes there which has got that real kind of passion fruit sweetness. So you can really cut the flavors. Yeah. Uh, and I would say that this is probably more in the compliment. You know, there's kind of that Christmassy baking -y sort of flavors yeah. that go into the into the beer that you're also getting in the, uh, in the Well, whiskey. you are looking at a bit of a darker beer compared to what I would normally drink as well. So yeah, I, I'm actually very new to boil makers, which is really funny because I experimented one night where I did 13 whiskeys and three different beers. Right. I didn't have all. I didn't have the whole thing. No, no, no. I was here and I was doing that and I was trying to learn it because I'd never done it before. So I got a Guinness and two other like IPA kind of things and whatnot. And I tried pretty much one, like little samples of it and having it there. I really only found one that I enjoyed. Um, I've got the note somewhere. I don't even know what it was, but it's kind of like the introduction to like the next part of the whiskey because I came from beer mm -hmm. and then now I'm back into whiskey again, enjoying it. So bringing the two together is absolutely amazing this is this is no offense to the cast strength that is amazing <laughs> but this because you can do this together and it's just it's just completely different because if if you're looking for a different or a certain style of drink you wouldn't be going oh which one do i pick because mm. they are completely different drinks yeah. um but this is very smooth and it has a beautiful finish to it as well and then yeah and you join this up with the with the beer uh, and there you go, you get yourself a party, that's mm. it. <laughs> no, that's it. So, um, what's kind of the next thing for Bladnock? Great question. Look, what we're really looking forward to, uh, once we've got you know, some more of these uh, you know, single casks uh, out to the market, uh, are some of the new whiskies that we have a chance to make using the uh, whiskey that we've distilled. So, yep. uh, you know, we, since we've rebuilt the distillery, we've been distilling new whiskey. That's what we're really excited about over the next kind of 12, 18 months is mm. giving a chance for some people to taste uh, some of the new whiskey. In the meantime, of course, uh, we've uh, we've given people a chance to try our new make spirit. In the moment, it's a UK exclusive. We've had a little bit of interest from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need a bit more convincing that it's worth yeah. shipping some cases over to uh, some Blade Knock fans over here, but we, we can do it if there's a, enough interest. But yeah, right now, the... Um, uh, the, they've got a big project uh, amongst the team at Bladnock is really looking forward to you know new whiskies that can combine some of the whiskies that we've distilled that we're kind of particularly proud of. So do you have a rule on the lowest age that you will do? So if you're talking about you've been doing distilling for five years of that stuff and you're talking in the next 12 to 18 months, are you looking at doing a, a, like a seven year old issue kind of whiskey or? Look, the rules of, of, the, of the Scotch production are that it must be at least three years. Yes. Um, so it certainly can't be any younger than that. Uh, Look, I think that uh, the the fixation on, on age being the only marker of quality is, is kind of over. And I think there are some great whiskies out there, especially new distilleries that have released young whiskies that are extremely good. Quality is the number one most important thing and the flavor of the whiskey is, is, is essential. And that's why 
you know, we do things like we don't chill filter and we don't add color uh, because you know, we believe in the quality of the whiskey. So uh, putting an age statement, whether it's young or old, is not the number one priority for us. Making a great whiskey is. Yeah, so, cool. You know, for us, I think we've got an incredible selection of old whiskies aging back to now 30 years old. Uh, but we've also got some fantastic whiskey that we've distilled since the since David bought the distillery that, uh, you know, we need a chance to, to showcase. So, uh, you know, some big, well-known distilleries are now releasing, you know, five-year-old age statement whiskies. And mm. I think that, again, you know, whiskey lovers are starting to realize that it, it's more than just the number on the bottle. And just because it says 12 years or 15 or even 18 years doesn't mean that it's that's fantastic. And sometimes you see a, uh, like a, um, uh, a white label brand winning a gold medal for mm. an 18 or a 25 year old whiskey and it's very cheap. Um, and, uh, you know what, try it, taste it, see if you like it, forget the number on the, on the bottle. If you like it, drink more of it. So that was my mistake. And I think, I, I think pretty much everyone kind of makes that mistake if they don't know better, um, when they get into that whiskey journey. And that was definitely my mistake when I was like, I had to buy a 12 year old. I had to buy an 18 year old. I had to buy a 25 year old. And then I was looking at things going, oh, it's $700 for a bottle. Mm. And then I'm currently doing a different kind of whiskey journey at the moment. Mm. And I'm finding that some of them are only three years old. And they're on par to the 18. Now, obviously, some some of us Australian mm. whiskey, we have different climates and things like that. They age quicker, but there are some whiskies out there that you can get four, five, six years of age that are killing anything that's a 12 year old. And look, you know, as much as anything, a lot of that's marketing. And you know, the tradition of of, uh, of a lot of marketing campaigns have said that you know an easy way to identify a better whiskey is the bigger number. Yep. Uh, and look, certainly in the case of Scotch, you know, the older the whiskey, the rarer it is, and mm. often that's what pushes the price up. But uh, yeah, there are some fantastic young whiskies, and there's some old whiskies that, you know, maybe aren't quite so uh, so deserving, perhaps, of the price tags. So before we wrap up, I've got to ask: Is there anything else that uh, you're hiding? There's always something in the uh, <laughs> in the bag of tricks. You always want an encore, uh, <laughs> uh, Zach. So, so yeah, we we've brought uh, something that's a, a bit special. We'll uh, move these uh, these out of the out of the way. I'll, I'll move these ones <laughs> just into the collection. <laughs> he won't notice them at all. So uh, one of the things that uh, you know we mentioned before is we've uh, we've been working with uh, some of our new make spirit and uh, we're selling it at the moment as a UK exclusive. But I've actually brought a uh, a little sample bottle for us to try uh, from the distillery just to get a little bit of an idea about what the blade knock is that we're making uh, today. The new make spirit that uh, that we're selling on our, uh, our website in the UK is 63.5 percent. It's what we put the whiskey in. Or the, the spirit into the barrel at and it's kind of like a peek behind the curtain at what whiskey making is all about and not a lot of distilleries sell their new make there are a few big distilleries that, that do share it we're particularly proud of i guess how much flavor there really is in a new make spirit and honestly uh it, whenever i smell this i feel i'm at the distillery because if you walk into blad not this That's is what it smells smell. like it's a very very different smell isn't it i think some people think that if they haven't ever tried new make that it's it's quite neutral it's like a, a vodka or, or yeah. you know, kind of like a very very mild white spirit but it's it really is quite full of flavor it's got that real sort of barley cereal kind of a, a of a nose to it so this will be my first ever um new make you've never had new make no my question will be and i, I know now what it is because i've actually googled it recently mm. what is new make to people that uh, you, you kind of covered it but what sure. actually is the new make process of whiskey making is we take malted barley Grind it up, makes in a, in a, in a mill, and uh, mix it with uh, with water. And uh, we're not allowed in Scotland to add any additives at all. So mm. basically, the, uh, the enzymes inside the the malted barley grain, uh, once it's ground up, have to do all the work to turn the starch into sugar. We take that uh, uh, that product, which is called wort. Uh, it's then yeast is added to it, and it ferments it into something which is. Not too dissimilar from a from a beer. Of course, there's no hops in it. Okay, so it's about you know seven or eight percent. That product is then distilled twice in our pair of stills. So there's a, a, a wash still, a spirit still, and after two distillations at Bladnock, our whiskey comes out at about sixty between sixty nine and seventy percent ABV. We bring it down to sixty three and a half, and that is new make. So it is literally yeah. fresh off the still. Uh, no time in a barrel uh, at all. It's really just the the raw product that comes off the stills, and you can see that it's got absolutely no color. So yeah. it's uh, uh, you know indistinguishable from water until you put your nose in it, and then then you start oh, realizing it, it's this takes me not. Back, <laughs> this takes me back to Bladnock. Really, it does. It's such a, a distinctive 
aroma and you know you stand in that still house when they're you know in full full swing and this is that smell in the air that's why there's absolutely no smoking and uh, no mobile phones oh, i was going to say that would have to be you know yeah no mm. <laughs> so a lot of guys when they talk about new make they they talk about buying a bottle and then putting it in their own little casks which obviously is not going to give the same experience you know they're mm. making their own stuff is that you know you've got the new make available in the uk only mm. is that something you think a lot of people will be doing over there or do you think that they'll just get it because it's the new blood not new make i think it's a good collectible yeah um, oh yeah that's look, why i'm, I'm trying to get one I, I i am sure that some people might reckon that they can make their own uh, whiskey in a little barrel yeah. and you know that's um uh questionable well you know <laughs> I'm, I, I am. I, I believe in the uh, in the free market. If you buy it and yep. you want to put it in a barrel, then you're welcome to it. But um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it after it's new make. I mean, I think yep. that uh, uh, tasting new make really gives you an appreciation when you can compare this to something like the ten year old. Oh yeah. Uh, just how important you know cask maturation really is, yep. and you know the water, the barley that's used, the shape of the stills, all of that impacts the new make. But once it's like this, then there's an incredibly uh, important. Uh, process of cask selection and storage and maturation and of course choosing the casks that we we put into the final single malt that goes into it so there's a lot of um uh there's a lot of steps between what you've got here and then what you've got in a, in a single cask of uh, of Bladnock over there so i think it's a good uh for for a collector someone who wants to understand about the history of, of mm. uh, whiskey but honestly you know it's a it's you know it tastes pretty good it you know? actually <laughs> does because i thought that you would just have alcohol and then that's it. You actually do get some kind of flavors through it, which is... It's mm. it's really, as I say, it's very, very distinctive. And, you know, it's hard to explain. It's not like a gin or a, or a no. vodka or anything like that. Um, something that's, that's that's to be tried. So, look, if people want to uh, try a new make, then uh, and, and put, give me a comment or send me a message I and say, say I want to... Uh, to, to try it and maybe you'll took us into bringing a few cases over here let's get behind it let's try and bring a new makeover because i want one in my collection and i also want to try one you yeah. know with some friends as well so yeah and that's the thing is it's great for bringing other people on that whiskey journey and explaining to them that uh you know whiskey making is such a big process and there's so much time and, and effort involved in it and you know this is this is the this is the first step on a long journey to, to getting whiskeys like the boiler maker like the the single cask and like the failure 26 year old and you know this is where it all starts it's quite a good good look into the origins one of the things for me the the reason why i love whiskey so much it's not just about the whiskey itself mm. it can be about the story we got behind the whiskey mm. and having new make now for the first time and seeing you make and seeing it's just purely white the story and then knowing what the process is it makes that and call it your brand but mm. any brand it, you know if i was sitting here with somebody else it makes me feel more connected with that. Um, and I, it's probably, I don't know if that sounds weird to people listening to this, but for me, everything that I do, so I am I sell real estate and I sell real estate. A house has a story behind it. Mm. We do interesting videos. If you haven't seen any of them, they're quite interesting. But we, ha we create the story and the lifestyle mm. and everything behind it. And that's mm. obviously, this is the start of mm. that story for Blood Knock and then this is the end journey, which I really appreciate. <laughs> when we made this product, we thought, how can we bottle one part of the experience of visiting a distillery? Mm. And once we're open again, we've got an amazing team that is just itching to get back to work to, to welcome people that visit the distillery and take a tour. But right now, that's not going to be possible. And for us in Australia, who knows when we're next going to be able to, to visit Scotland. I mean, I was talking with David today. And, you know, we just don't know when he and he owns the distillery is going to be able to visit his you know, beautiful estate in Scotland. And uh, this is a this is a, a little bit of the experience of and when you visit uh, Scotland and you visit Bladnock, we will give you some new make to try. Yeah. You know, this is a part of the tour. But you know, now the opportunity to, to taste it at home. And like you say, sharing it with friends and helping them understand the whiskey journey. You know, new make's a pretty cool product. All right. So before we wrap up, I want to know one thing. Give me a Bladnock exclusive. What was your most... Give you two here. Well, no, 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 well, okay, no, no, okay, I get that. What's the most fondest memory, and we haven't recorded this at all, or I haven't even told him. What's the fondest memory you have from either joining Bladnock or even getting these bottles? Like, what's the one thing that you just, you, you kind of look back on being with the company and you just kind of smile? Oh, I, it's every time I pick up a glass of whiskey, yeah, I think. Right. Uh, I would say that... Uh, the first time that I visited the distillery and 
yeah, walked in to, there's, a, there's an amazing uh, kind of vista over the stills. So you, you, you walk into the distillery and there's the mill and there's the, um, the, you know, you, there's the, the washbacks on one side where all the, the, um, the wort's fermenting. Mm. And then you climb up the stairs and there's like a little mezzanine and you look down over these enormous copper stills that uh, are you know, bubbling away making whiskey and you get the kind of the goosebumps where you're like, this is, not only is this magic happening, but this is 200 years that we're mm. continuing that tradition. So that's pretty cool. I would say that the first time you go up and you see this, you get an appreciation of, you know, what we're doing and, and uh, you know, what's kind of come before us and, you know, what's going to come for hopefully another 200 years ahead of us. So that was probably the most memorable moment yeah, since I tried Bladenoff. Hopefully when it's back open again, everyone I know, I'm just telling everyone about thing. This, this thing that nobody can do at the moment, including us. So, yeah, that'll be the... That'll be the first thing. As soon as we can, we'll be jumping on a plane, heading back to Bladnock, and, and, you know, Nick and I and David will be able to sit and enjoy one of these great whiskeys together. All right, guys. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in. This has been a bit of a longer one, but a very insightful interview because I'm learning a few different things that I had, didn't know about. Um, also, the sampling of stuff that's not even actually in Australia, you don't know how much that actually means to me. This is... <laughs> fucking awesome there's no other way to say it um i've contained swearing through the whole video till then so guys thank you so much and uh keep watching any other videos for uh i'm hopefully going to start some more interviews because this has been quite good and hopefully out there you guys have learned something as well thank you for joining me mate cheers cheers